Hey everyone, Larry Walsh here with Channelnomics. I've been studying the channel for a long time. I've been in this business for more than 20 years, and I've always recognized the diversity of our industry and our community. There are many different types of partners, different routes to markets, and they all have unique and, and interesting models and value propositions. Uh, one of them is technology service distributors. Now, these companies, they grew out of the telecom channel, are specialists, or they were once upon a time specialists, in brokering the data and voice services that companies like AT&T and Verizon provided through agents that worked out in the field selling to companies from everyone from enterprise to Main Street shops. But these companies have evolved and they're continuing to evolve as more of the products that used to live on site as hardware and software have moved into services. So now these technology service distributors are selling everything from cybersecurity to cloud compute services, to backup services, to, to business applications. Anything that can be sold remotely and delivered remotely is being sold through TSDs. Um, yet for some reason, the vendor community still often finds them to be a bit of a mystery. They don't always know what to do with them. They don't fully understand or appreciate the model and the value that TSDs bring to the channel. So we thought we would actually go to the source of one of this, of one of these TSDs and find out what makes them different, what makes them unique and how they're evolving. So we've asked Adam Edwards, the CEO of Tolaris to join us here to demystify technology service distributors, what they are, what they're not and where they're going. This is Changing Channels. I'm Larry Walsh. Let's get into it. Adam Edwards, welcome to Changing Channels. Thanks, Larry. Great to be with you. Great. It's great to have you here. I've been wanting to have... One of your TSDs here for a while. Uh, you, you and your brethren uh, keep coming up in conversation for a variety of reasons. Uh, but just for those who don't understand what a technology services distributor is, why don't you tell us a little bit about your model, the model of TSDs, as well as a bit about Tolaris. It'd be great to learn more about who you are and where you come from. You bet. You know, I think that the name technology services distributor is uh, a, a, a little misleading. Um, we don't distribute anything, yet uh, somehow we came upon that name. We've called been called many different things um, over the years, and um, TSD happens to be sticking right now, so we'll go with that. My view is I believe we're more of a business enablement company, uh, that we enable suppliers to get to market. More importantly, we enable sellers uh, these individual technology advisors out there to sell. And so we happen to be in the middle of, uh, of, of those entities trying to enable them to sell technology, to uh, guide their customers through uh, digital transformation, technology purchasing decisions. And these are all services. So there is no inventory. So the funny thing about you know being a distributor moniker is there is no distribution, there's no logistics. You know, sometimes I feel like the Disties have more in common with Cisco Foods than they do with a TSD because they're getting things from point A to point B, whereas what we're really doing is advising. And we are advising the advisor uh, to, to help them grow their business and help them advise others on uh, you know technical challenges. Okay, so it, it's interesting you describe it that way because my first introduction to TSDs was when you were called master agents. You're primarily telco focused. Uh, and it was really about you managing contracts on behalf of the telcos so that the agents, your downstream sellers wouldn't have to have these individual complex relationships. Uh, and you sell paper. And I kind of still think of you that way, is yeah. that you're, you're, you're selling paper, which makes you quite adaptable to the shift in the market towards everything as a service. Is, is thinking about it that way, a, a good way of like a, a mind cleanser to get around that entire like misnomer about you being a distributor? I think so. I think the roots are helpful in understanding who we are and what we do. You know, if you look at those roots of being the telco guys, the ones that sell telecom, you know, the commonality it has with today's technology is here's a remotely delivered service. You are not going to be a telco carrier unless you had a massive infrastructure. And by the way, you weren't going to sell it the way other technology was sold through a VAR. A value-added reseller would take a blade server, install it, 
pull the wires, turn the screwdriver, and patch it every once in a while. Well, telecom, you weren't going to do that. You had these huge tax burdens of Public Utilities Commission. You had a uh, state taxes, federal taxes, all sorts of requirements. If you were in a $50 million company, forget it. And so the way they went to market rather than through VARs was through these agents, these isolated independent salespeople. But the, the commonality, again, remotely delivered service that benefited from scale, but needed some sort of advisor to go through this highly fragmented market of which one should I choose? And so those roots really got us where we are now. Same thing, remotely delivered services, all these cloud services, whether it's security or compute or store or still communications, remotely delivered service. I need an advisor to help me make sense of this fragmented market. I need to reduce my business risk or my career risk. If I'm making a decision, I should probably reach out to an expert. So I think, the, you know, it's funny. Years ago, people felt like, oh, well, one day they'll grow up and they'll look more like VARs. And that's just not the case. It's kind of, I, I believe the trajectory of this industry, of these boutique advisors, they look more like boutique Deloitte's and Accenture's than they look like a boutique uh, you know, massive VAR or, or uh, you know, systems integrator. Okay, I have a slightly different perception of them. I mean, because I agree with you, there are some agents out there that are quite sophisticated uh -huh. and they have good, you know, well-rounded organizations and sophisticated methodologies. And then you got some that are out there operating off the dining room table. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a great degree in difference in the type of agents that are in market. Do you, when you start talking about this evolution away from your telco roots into selling things like cybersecurity services or selling compute or selling things like SD WAN, there's the vendor side of this equation often is concerned about the, the quality of the engagement. Can the person who's on in front of the customer represent the brand properly? It, how do you do that when you have that gradation of sellers out in the market? How do you, you know, you're the 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 partner to that partner in providing that guidance, but how do you do that effectively at scale? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, and I think suppliers are concerned with that. You know, yesteryear it was, hey, you get certified in my product and then you pull through distribution because you are certified to sell my product. But what we're finding is so much of the intelligence is at the core. It's in the cloud now. What we need is more of an advisor to talk through what your issues are, what your business needs. And it may not be the badge I'm wearing. It may not be the manufacturer that I happen to be certified with. It may be one of a dozen. And it's very hard to have expertise on all of those. That's why I can look, when I look at a TSD, I see more of a business enablement organization or the engineer's engineer. So that these, like you said, the masses, you've got all these people out there. Are they qualified to sell these things? Well, with us, they are. With our engineering engagement, our project management engagement. And one of the ways we see ourselves growing is by growing the expertise of those folks. So I'll give you an example of that. We acquired a, a regional TSD a couple of years ago. And one of the test cases was, let's look at this population. And with our education and our engineers and our assistants, can we get them to sell, number one, an expanded set of products, so not just connectivity? Number two, can we get them to sell more upmarket in more complex engagements? And the answer to that was yes. By the way, not the entire population, but the population self-selects. What happens is they reach out to us for an engagement. They pull us in. They experience success. They go and do it themselves. And so it really is a process of this filtering and self-selection where they become more sophisticated. And all of a sudden, They've got license to walk in very large engagements and have a competent uh, conversation and bring value to that. And, and that grows the market. And that's good for us. Yeah. If, is it fair? And, and I'm not trying to speak ill of anyone, because I think every type of partner out there, whether we're talking about a traditional reseller or an integrator uh, or a managed service provider or even an agent, they, they all have a role to play. They all have a value proposition to the customer. Um, but is it a fair thing to say is that if you think about a traditional reseller or an integrator, they're very much concerned about the technology itself, you know, being able to, you know, tune the dials and spin screws, whereas an agent has always struck me as one that's concerned about selling and selling on what the benefits are and what the outcomes are going to be. Is that still what you would consider to be the case of the, the value of an agent? Yeah, you know, Larry, I still think the same way. When I look at the persona of these industries and people say the channel, well, it turns out there are multiple channels. When I think about the MSP and the VAR channel, in my simplistic mind, I think of an engineer 
an engineer who wanted to be the smartest guy in the room, who wanted to go fix things and decided to do it on their own. And so those businesses, to me, appear to still have the personality of that founding engineer of, hey, we fix things and you call us first and, and we're going to fix it for you. It's all on our invoice. We own it. We, we've got the problems. We're the smartest people around. Look at all my certifications. Whereas we, we found this when we acquired one of these companies, we acquired a circuit monitoring company. We looked at their marketing. We thought, man, there's a lot of words here. There's a lot of bullet points. Uh, this dark people don't do this. Where's the smiley faces? Because our world has been really built out of former salespeople. People who said, you know what? My comp plan has been broken one too many times. I know I can sell more. I know I can get the customer to say yes. And so I view this channel as having much more the personality of a salesperson, which means I'm I'm getting into that room where, you know, maybe I don't belong. I'm selling above maybe where my skill set is today. And I think it's morphing now. What's interesting is there's a maturity going on. There's this professionalization that I love seeing in this channel. When, when, when I'm talking about the advisor channel, where we're seeing a more consultative approach and not just the sales approach of, I'm going to pound the phones until someone says yes. You know, the reason people are able to go up market and sell these additional services is because they're listening to the customer, finding out what they need, and happy to identify the source for that solution without it being them. And I think that's a very different motion than an engineer that wants to own the whole thing and wants to package it. Um, it is just a different, more of, a, I would say, a, a consultative movement that was born out of sales. I agree with that. But the, one of the things we also know is that there is no single company in the market, regardless of the type of technology products we're talking about or service we're talking about, there's no single provider that can solve for everything the customer needs. So you can't go to Cisco and get everything. You can't go to Microsoft and get everything. You do need to have a collection. And your advisors, the way you're describing this, it, it sounds great, is that they're able to do the identification. But there's still oftentimes, even within services sales, that you need to have somebody who can actually touch it, somebody who can actually help the, the customer tune it the right way, integrate it with other mm -hmm. systems, optimize its functionality, and help with the maintenance. Where's the connective tissue with the TSDs and what others would call the broader ecosystem where they can pull in these engineers if needed? Or how do you make those connections between the sellers and the doers? You bet. Um, so, so you're right. In terms of implementation services, I think in, in some models that is seen as part of the value that's being offered. In this model, it really isn't. In fact, what you'll see a lot of people, a lot of the providers that are selling through this channel are, are truly scaled up MSPs. That's really what they are. Some of these CLEX converted into uh, uh, MSPs, they're, they're, they're packaging together other services. In fact, if you look at some of our biggest ser uh, security services, they came through AT&T. Well, AT&T was bundling other things, other technologies, and put those together in a package, much as an MSP would. We look at Palo Alto, that's another great example of, they bought Cloudgenics, a, an SD-WAN provider, and said, you know what? We're not really good at running this channel, so why don't we enable our resellers of this product to sell through the channel? And that's what we're doing. We've got four different resellers that offer the Palo Alto product. They will implement it, they will manage it, they will serve it, and we're very happy selling those products. And guess what? The customer doesn't really care. Because what studies have found from you know, carriers of yesteryear and to providers today is that there's a certain segment of the market that is going to purchase through this channel and doesn't really care about that brand. It's not, it's not the IBM days or the AT&T days where I have to sell through this for my job security. It's, you no, know, you better get the best technology and it better work. And we don't really care what logo that comes through. And so we're finding that that advisor has a lot of sway. Uh, with the customer and the the, uh, the product that goes through there. And so what the, the advisor is looking for is, I want the best experience for my customer, and I'm going to find that through my experience, through my TSD's experience, not necessarily, not necessarily through the logo and the marketing that is put in front of me. I think that the, first, the strength of the agent channel or the traditional telco agent channel, which is now increasingly more, just call it services, has been its ability to sell. And there's an expectation of working with companies like Tolaris and others like you that that's where your strength is, your your ability to identify and, and bring customers to the table and actually get deals done. 
yet there's still a lot of and i can say this because we get this question we get this issue and in, in, get into these conversations with uh with vendors at Chelonomics that don't really understand that they mm. look at the tsds and it's still a bit of a mystery they don't really quite understand what companies like tolaris are doing what is you know what is you know some of the criticisms would be is that you're too expensive um the terms are too rigid but i look at them and say yeah, but you're getting a higher guarantee of a pull through. So what's the mystery between the perception versus what you actually deliver on? And and how do we can how can we demystify that for the vendor community? Well, what the answer is and how we demystify it, I think are two different questions. So I'll take the first one, okay. um, which is uh, what what do we actually do? And I think the question that question has been around for years and years. And it used to be, you know, 15 years ago, I would be, be having the conversation of payback periods and the provider would say, look, I would rather have it go through my direct channel because after seven years, it's actually a better outcome for me because I'm not paying a recurring commission. And therefore, I want everything to go direct because the payback period. And that was really a false argument. And I think that logic is largely, um, uh, it, it, it was um, misunderstood there. And I think is better understood now. The better way to look at this is the incremental business you will receive. In fact, I've talked to um, senior leadership at several of our larger providers just in the past few months. And there's a recognition that these are incremental sales. And the question is not, do I want it through this channel or that channel? The question is, do I want to participate? Because those customers are going there anyway. This is how customers are going to purchase. Do you want to participate? And the, it's it's less of an economic. Do the economics work out? That may in, in indicate whether or not you want to work with it. But what they have found out as they dig through the numbers is the longevity. One of the things about this channel, you know, you look at that as an expense, but it is a perfect alignment in economics with the advisor and the customer. So think about that. We've got customers who have been billing on services for over 10 years, and they've got an advisor alongside of them they can reach out to any time that says, you know what, things aren't working as well as they, they used to. I need some help on this, that, or the other. And that advisor is still economically in line not to run an engagement, not to run a consulting service or patch something. They're, they are incented at that moment to go and make things right. And that's good for the provider as well to get that customer from going from 10 years to 12 or 15 years. But I don't know of another uh, another economic model that aligns the customer and the advisor so well to that provider that wants the long duration, but is also going to be the first person to, to help that uh, customer get what they need. So going back to the question of, you know, what does the TSD do? Well, number one, we talked about expense. Mm -hmm. um, is it really expensive? I don't think so when you look at incremental, what, what the incremental dollars are. When you pull back marketing, when you pull back the expense of the people, the salespeople you're ramping that leave nine months later and, and what you're paying there. Also, what we found is when some of these providers pull back teaming, they don't want the channel to work so much with direct. They feel like they're double comping. Well, the channel that wins out is the channel, not the direct. It's the advisor because that's the person that really has the relationship. And just because a supplier has painted a box around a group of national or enterprise accounts or whatever else, same box that every other provider has drawn a box around those customers, nobody owns those customers. The customer says yes to the person that they trust and they feel has their best interest in mind. So I would say to you, it's it's incremental sales. And the question is, do they want to participate or not? Now, what do we do? Uh, we, we bring, as an industry, I would say we bring in incremental business. Um, number two, I think, is uh, we bring a better experience. So implementations are typically better because you've got an advisor along the side. And number three, you've got longevity. Those customers last longer because of the economic incentive. So it's a different way of looking at it. Now, I think the, 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 there is a way to look at that from a different angle and say, hey, but you're missing all the implementation and all the rebilling effort and the bad debt you know, risk and all of that. Well, yeah, but I think that shows up in the compensation as well. I think providers have said, no, 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 I can take on that expense. What I can't do is create new customers. What I can't do is tap into this channel without your help. And those have figured it out. In terms of what the TSD does in that scenario is we augment the resources that, of that advisor. So I, I, I will say with existing advisors, it's the engineering. Even though some, many of them have hired engineers or are engineers, we are the engineers engineers because we see thousands of transactions every month. We engage on uh, with our partners with those customers and we have insights and, and I think insight we can help them with. Um, number two, we help with escalations internally because of the clout we have. 
But I would go back to supplier value. I'll go back to the beginning. What we're really doing is growing this channel. We're recruiting and activating new advisors. We're educating them on new products and we're helping those suppliers get to market, coaching them. We've got a supplier management team that coaches them on how to create awareness, how to engage these advisors, how to entice them to want to sell your brand versus the other and how to best sell it and creating that alignment. Yeah. I used to, in listening to you, it reminds me of something, um, somebody I used to work with once described, boastfully described, I should should say, uh, the, the channel is, and when I say channel is like the channel at large, is a lead gen engine. Hmm. And I had a lot of problems with that because yes, partners can generate demand, they can generate new, net new leads. But they're net, oftentimes they're net new to the particular vendor or brand that's trying to sell through. They're not net new to the partner. And, right. yeah. I, and I look at the TSDs and the breadth of what you're now covering is that you, what you were just describing, these customer relationships between your advisors or even the relationships you have with the customers through your advisors. And you have a lot of information about what they're already consuming. How are you, how is Tolaris leveraging that data and that that intelligence to be able to facilitate? So you bring a new vendor on, does that does that grease the wheels to move a little bit faster? Does it allow you to do better targeting? Does it allow you to you know actually create that that lift that they're looking for in a more effective or a more expeditious way? Yeah, you know I, I think there's off. Uh, often a misconception of a supplier coming on board with a TST of, oh, the spigot's going to open and it's mm. just going to flow. The order is just going to flow. Well, it turns out it doesn't happen that way. And the reason is, the fundamental reason is an advisor's value is the trust their customers have with them. And like you said, you, you know, you're really tapping into an existing relationship. What you're doing is tapping into that advisor uh, and, and their trusted relationship. Someone's trusted them for 10 years. But you can't just buy that relationship. That that person earned that relationship over 10 years, and that advisor is going to say, hang on a second, hang on a second. I would not dare put this in front of my customer, risk ride my reputation, unless I can be confident. In fact, I had this conversation with an advisor a few months ago. They said, look, man, you keep telling me about CX and how my customer is perfect for it, and I agree. But here's the thing. I've been managing and owning their network and helping them with it for years. And those are my contacts and that's my expertise. If I walk in there and say, hey, by the way, all of a sudden I'm an expert here, that's not going to go well. Oh, and by the way, if it goes south, farewell to my existing business and my reputation. So how about you get me real confident on how we can make a best introduction, how we can bring on engineers and I can assist the introduction, but not associate my brand until I am absolutely certain. That's the kind of mindset. I mean, think about it. They've earned trust with their customer. So the, the, then when a supplier comes on board, it's our job as a TSD to how do we engage those, those advisors and get them confident in selling your product? It's not just a, hey, who can pay me the most? You got to spit or something a little extra in it for me. That is, that is not the case. When you look at these professional advisors, it's great. Let me understand it. Help me see it. Let me see some success cases. If some of my peers sold it, what was their experience? I mm -hmm. don't want to put my customers in harm's way. And that's why they're trusted by their customers is because they look at things through that lens to protect their, their relationship. And that's how, what you're tapping into is that uh, is that long-term relationship and that trust. And that just takes time. And so the new provider, we're going to help them. But that new provider is going to have to participate in education, going to have to participate in one-on-one -on -one engagement with these providers. And yes, we will assist with that. We will enable that, but it does take time. So let's come back to the the, the D and TSD for distribution. Yeah. Right? So if you go to the big broadline distributors, they'll tell you that they can do anything. They have boxes, they have services, they have support resources, and they span a number of categories, legacy and emerging. And I, you know, you get it. That's what their job is. But you a TSD is a much, you know, a company like Tolaris is much different than that. What is it that you won't touch? What is it that you know that you know, some brand or some vendor comes knocking on your door and said, you know what, we hear you guys are great at sales. What and you look at them and say, Yeah, you're not our you're not our supplier. You're not the type of company that'll do well with us. So what won't you touch? You know, there are a few things we look at. Um, 
it, we, we've, we've been aggressive in the past at trying to add new providers because we felt like, hey, this is what our uh, advisors want. This is what their customers are looking for. And we should put this through. And so we do an onboard, we do a training, we do some work. And what we found is that we're not really good at the push. We're better at the pull. And what I mean by that is if we can start to see early indication from our advisors of, hey, I'm getting questions about this. Hey, I'm seeing some success out here. Um, that's our first indicator. The second one is, do they have channel experience? And my greatest fear is they say yes, but they have the wrong channel experience because they, they have all these, you know, these misconceptions. What I, I would rather have someone say, I, we don't have a clue about the channel, but we're happy to invest in it. Um, because then they're going to hire someone who's been expert at this channel. They're going to hire someone and engage in a way that we know is going to be successful. And we want to see that sign of investment rather than the, the you know, the, the idea that, hey, look, I, I just, I put my coin in and, you know, the thing goes round. Yeah, right. Great. I put my coin in that. Well, that never works. And so that's a red flag for us. Yeah. Uh, and so we do a few checks along the way of, hey, are they committed? Do they have a two year budget? Are do they have, you know, e either the know how internally or ready to bring on the know how to engage in this channel? Because it's a waste of time for us to onboard a provider who's not going to be successful. And um, those, I would say, are the two primary things. There, there's a big checklist, but the primary things we look for is there a pull through and advisors are always saying, hey, already saying, hey, I see this and it fits. And number two, is there a channel knowledge um, and, and willingness to invest to, uh, to, to grow this long term? You know, it's, you know what? I think that's a key indicator for any business, though. I mean, it's no sense in throwing money at any, at any problem or any desire if there's not an ability to execute, right? is that you have to have some strategic level of alignment and the ability to actually engage before you can have any level of success with the TSD like Dolores or any other company out there. Uh, yeah. so, so if there's three things that a novice vendor, you know, they may be experienced in the channel, they may be a startup, but they're looking at Tolaris as a potential uh, channel to sell through. What are three pieces of advice you'd give them? Um, number one, I would say set your sights for the long term. It, it is an extremely powerful channel you can tap into. There are some companies that are doing channel only, that they are thriving in this channel, have zero direct, have zero resellers. They are simply thriving in this channel because they focused on it. But that takes time. And so number one, I would say set your sights on you know the, 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 the committed duration. Uh, the, the next item is, I would say, get to know some partners first. Don't go into it cold. Either hire someone. There are plenty of consultants now, which I'm thrilled about. That's one of the things we need more than anything is education on this channel. I think there's so many misconceptions, but they should bring on a consultant of, of kind of a guide that can say, hey, I've seen this movie before. Let me help you out and, and let me walk you through how to do this. The third thing I would say is look at things through the partner's eyes and stand out for one thing. And that's a very hard thing to do. But if you put yourself in a, an advisor's position and understand, look, they're trying to earn trust with their customer. And no matter what they're selling, it's not about that single sale. It's about the ongoing relationship. And it's about reinforcing their relationship and the trust their customer has. So how you make them look good. And it's really by standing out for one thing. Too many people come in the channel and say, look, we can do it all. Well, the problem is an advisor can't keep that in their mind. Nobody does it. Like you said it earlier, nobody yeah. does it all. But if you can be known for one thing of, look, when it comes to retail locations, if you see it in the food court in a shopping mall, think of us. You know, anything you can do to narrow the scope counterintuitively, you know, that's what's going to broaden you in, in the minds of our advisors is uh, when we've seen people go niche, that's the wedge. They get people's mindset. And then that partner just wants to sell more for it. What else do you sell? What else do you do? That was such a great experience. I want to bring more of your products in and you can expand that way. And uh, we've seen several, actually, I'd say many providers uh, uh, come from that angle. And it's, it's a, it's a very strong one. Yeah. And I would agree with you for, you know, one point and selfishly saying as, as Channelomics does provide that type of consulting to help companies identify their best routes to market. This is something that we often find ourselves in, conversations about is okay when's the right time or if it's the right time or the right the right choice to go with the TSD and you're right it does take education 
There's, um, th- th- that I was, I would say, I, I want to reinforce that. That is our biggest challenge right now is educating, educating suppliers. And by the way, thank you for the work you're doing. I hear the echo when, you know, these, these senior leaders at these um, organizations who don't understand the channel, engage channel nomics and, and understand. Sometimes it's the same thing their channel leaders are telling them internally, but hearing a third party and validating it through data and experience and being able to benchmark um, makes a big difference in the conversation we're able to have. And I think to lift the the industry and continue to grow what customers are demanding, it, it takes that education. Yeah, I agree. So look, I could talk with you forever on this topic, but I, I you know, at a certain point, we're going to run out of electrons on the internet. So let me ask you this, because I, I, I am curious. The first time I encountered a company like Tolaris was about 15 years ago. I didn't know what to make of them then but you have evolved tremendously and you're continuing to evolve. So look forward five years for us. What is a TSD like Tolaris going to look like in five years? What, you know, how are you going to continue to evolve? Yeah, I think, you know, predicting the, the, the future is tough, but if you start looking at trends, I think it becomes a little easier to just continue the trend. So when you look at where we came from, I would call us an insurance product, quite honestly, is we were protecting that recurring commission from getting cut off. That's why we came into existence, or I should say my predecessors came into existence and now, you know, what we found is um, not just being a payment facilitator, but we can add so much value to both parts of the equation. We've done that through added added services of supplier management, of engineering, of product management, financial services. And when I go back to being saying business enablement, that's the trajectory I see continue to run. So going from a supplier side, what we're doing in terms of benchmarking for suppliers, this is where you sit relative to your competitors. This is how quickly you're implementing relative to them. This lifetime value of a customer, how long they're lasting, add on services. Here's what you can do. Here are some of the best practices, helping them do a better job of penetrating the channel. That, that trajectory is going to continue. On the other side are providers continuing to recruit, activate, and elevate those, those advisors is going to happen in offering expanded portfolio of products which we've continued to go from, you know, from voice to network, to security, to cloud, IOT, AI. We're seeing all of these things. So the products continue to expand. We're seeing the education enablement expand, but what you're seeing a lot more of is the data. So we sit, if you look at where TSD sits, we sit in a, in an, a, 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 uh, spot where so many transactions go through this hub, the insight we can give and then, then deliver to both of those parties, both the service provider and to the um, advisor. We don't think that's going away. You know, marketplaces I view as a clearinghouse for many people who've already made up their mind. But when, when it comes to a complex decision that has business risk and career risk, when there's a considered decision, someone's going to want to reach out to an expert and we're going to augment that expert with data, with insight, with awareness of things that are going on, things that have gone well with the provider, things that have not gone well, best practices. We're gonna to continue to augment that provider and help the service provider come along. And so uh, th- that's what I see for the next several years is that data becoming a much more rich part of the engagement. That's fantastic. Well, we're gonna look forward to seeing it because as I said, the technology services distributors have evolved beyond anything that you know you wouldn't recognize if you plopped in from from twenty, you know, from twenty ten to now, you wouldn't recognize a company like Tolaris, and I don't think we're going to recognize you again in five to ten years. So, we're looking forward to seeing it. Adam Edwards, thanks so much for joining us here on Changing Channels. Larry, thanks as always. Well, that's about all the time we have for this edition of Changing Channels. I want to thank our guest, Adam Edwards, the CEO of Tolaris, for joining us to talk about technology service distributors. And of course, I want to thank all of you for joining us again here on Changing Channels. We really appreciate you tuning in and hearing what we have to say. If you like what we're doing here, please hit like, hit subscribe, tell your friends. And as always, please check out all the content and all the services we have at channelnomics.com. We're here to help make the channel a better place for everyone. Until next time, I'm Larry Walsh.